So you might think defending the Christian faith is just a small discipline within theology. Well, you might be surprised that there are several styles, and these styles come with their own extensive literature. There are about four main types of Christian apologetics, classical, evidential, presuppositional, and fideism. In this video, I would like to look with you at the presuppositional apologetics. I'm not going into depth, but I would like to explain a bit more what it is and how we can use it. Oh, and by the way, you might have seen that I have uh, started uploading a few presentations. I'm very sorry, but these are in the Dutch language. I gave these presentations in 2014, but I've never uploaded it. So uh, I'm starting to upload them right now. Anyway, if you speak Dutch, you can watch them, of course. So quite often we Christians feel that we need to prove the Bible or the existence of God and we have this feeling that even though we assume the Bible to be true, the other does not, making us uncomfortable trying to prove that, um, that, that what we hold dear. However, the presuppositional ap apologist is using a different approach. Presuppositions are the convictions that every person has and everybody walks around with a set of ideas he or she believes to be true. Obviously, this affects uh, how we think, uh, see the world around us, how we interpret evidence, and even how we read the Word of God, the Bible, and how we explain it. Apologetics is the discipline within theology where we can learn to give a logical sound defense of our faith. And this means that presuppositional apologetics also gives a logical sound defense of our faith, but without ignoring our presuppositions or that what he or she takes, uh, we take for granted. So what do we take for granted or presuppose? Or in other words, what should a Christian take as absolute truth? Well, first off, we absolutely believe that God exists and we have received this word with which is the absolute truth. A Christian thus looks at the world around him and interprets the things he sees through the Bible. The Bible should be our foundation in the way we think and act. It should also be our cornerstone in the way we explain evidence. So I use the Bible as the basis for how to think, interpret evidence, explain the world around me and read the Bible itself. An atheist's uh, presupposition will most likely be that there is no God and that truth is relative. An atheist believes that man decides truth and so he thinks, interprets evidence and views the world around him and the Bible accordingly. So now we need to talk a little bit about an axiom. An axiom is a, a proposition that is not susceptible for, of proof or disproof. It is, its truth is assumed to be self-evident. A presuppositionalist starts off by believing that the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is being used here as an axiom because the truth is assumed without doubt. A presuppositionalist might back this up with the following um, Bible verses. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And Psalm 18 verse 30 As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. And Proverbs 30 verse 5 Every word of God is pure, as he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. The Bible itself seems to take this stance as well. Everywhere we just see that God introduces himself as an absolute. He is not to question because he is. We see this in Revelation uh, chapter 1 verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And what, what to think about Exodus 3 verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, have sent me unto you. When adopting this approach, the apologist no longer tries to persuade the other of the evidence for God or his word. Uh, the debate shifts towards the more philosophical aspects of life. Because the apologist has taken the Bible as his or her axiom. He or she will never try to argue outside the Bible. 
There were other apologists might debate about archaeology or geology and how that field proves the Bible. A presuppositionalist is not even going into the argument of proof. He or she is already convinced that the Bible is true and that God exists. And as such, he or she believes that the unbeliever also know this to be true. Let's look at Romans 1 verse 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And Second Peter chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth, standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Sometimes unbelievers will tell you to argue your case um, without the use of the Bible. I believe a Christian should never do that, but I think we all been there, right? But even if you are not into presuppositional apologetics, you shouldn't do it. It's dumb to put God's word aside because an unbeliever gets uncomfortable with it. That's his problem. A presuppositionalist will never ever put down his Bible. They often compare this with uh, a soldier who is going into, the, into battle without any armor or weapons. It's like asking, in my case, because I used to be a bread baker, it's like asking a bread baker to bake his bread without an oven. How on earth is that ever going to succeed? No, the Bible is our shield and sword. If an atheist ever asks you to put it away, you might counter that question by asking him to prove that there is no God by using only the Bible. You see, that would be impossible for him because that would mean that he has to give up his axiom. Yes, you heard that right. An atheist also um, has an axiom since his truth is assumed to be self-evident. Um, an atheist proposition, there is no God, is not su uh, susceptible of proof or disproof. They just assume that they are right. So I believe that there is a time and place for this style of apologetics. Uh, on Madagascar, it isn't that hard to uh, right away um, uh, start from the point that God just exists. Most Malagasy people assume that God is there. In the West, in Europe and America, um, this seems to be quite different. Still, in most of my discussions, I refer to the Bible. If people don't like it, then that's their problem. However, sometimes it seems uh, better to help people a little bit more evidence-wise, to understand that the Bible isn't that weird um, as they thought. That's the way I came to Christ. An interesting fact, actually, in the Bible is that the prophets and the apostles never tried to prove God's existence. They started by assuming God's existence, and they always used scripture to make their point. Let's look at Acts 17, verse 2 and 3. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. So when well played, this style of apologetics can help the unbeliever to realize that it is he or she who needs to ju justify his or her ideas. And that way they might understand that they are up against the Almighty himself and not so much against our personal ideas. Anyway, um, do let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe you disagree on certain things. Just leave a comment. Um, but remember, I'm mostly active on my Odyssey channel. You'll find a link to that channel here in the description uh, or on my website. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to receive a notification every time I upload a video. I very much appreciate your prayers and your support. Please take a look in the description of the video to find out how you can help me. Uh, also, I'll place a link there to both the Dutch and English transcripts of, of this video. I wish you God's rich blessings, um, thank you for watching and God willing we'll see each other in the next video. Thank you for watching this video, you can give me a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also subscribe to my channel or even better, follow me on Odyssey. That way you will never miss a new video. You will find all the links in the description below.